Well, Mondays are mostly the most boring days, starting, of course, the week. But, however, on this particular Monday, we're just going to do one review, and that is, of course, with New Japan Pro Wrestling with The Road to Sakura Genesis. As you know, Yoda Suji will be facing Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP title. But for our main event for this particular day, we have the KOBW title being defended in a very wacky type of stipulation or so. And then uh, we got some news updates that I think many of you are going to be excited on what's going on with the promotions with their upcoming events, who's booked, what matches are set. And of course, we just have announcement for the latest inductee in the WWE Hall of Fame. And of course, some interesting developments happening in the world of pro wrestling. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted WrestleZone. everybody to deleted wrestle zone all things that is pro wrestling with aew nxt new japan pro wrestling tna the national wrestling alliance various promotions wrestlers matches and championships i am your host jay right here so if you are new to the channel welcome this is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions not only here in the united states but also in japan Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert what's been happening in the world of pro wrestling as we speak. We also do the Unagi Sayaka Watch and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool features on this channel as well. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or leave us a nice description in a nice comment in the description down below. Now, with all the introductions are set aside, I believe let's get the show on the road with our very first review and our only one for today, and that is, of course, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, so... Let's begin with our only review for today, New Japan Pro Wrestling Road to Sakura Genesis. Now, this was originally taped on uh, March 31st and just recently been released today on April 1st. Now, um, I did not expect this, but yeah, so that's what happened. Um, let's begin with our very first match. We have Shota um, Kato taking on Jeff Cobb. Now, as you would expect that this match would definitely end with Jeff Cobb winning, it just did. Uh, I mean, yes, a uh, great effort from Sh uh, Shota Kota, but it was uh, pointless because I thought uh, Jeff Cobb was going to finish him off with the Tour of the Islands. No, he did the standing moonsault, and just like that, they won. Our next match, we have the Jet Setters, Kevin Knight and Kushida taking on members of the Bullet Club War Dogs, more specifically Ghetto. And Clark Connors. Now, don't forget, recently we know the Jet Setters laid down the challenge against the Bullet Club War Dogs, current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Champions, Clark Connors and Drilla Maloney. Now, we don't know when will this match happen, but I will probably say it could happen at Sakura Genesis. But right now they're facing against Ghetto and Clark Connors. So you would think that this is going to be a bit of a warm up. However, this match ended with, of course, Kushida picking up the win when he take, took out Ghetto by applying the hoverboard log. And just like that, he picked up the win. Now, our next match, we have an eight-man, no, five-man tag match. 
no, ten, no, ten man tag match. My bad. Uh, we have Bolton Oleg, Tomaaki Hamna, El Desperado, along with members of Chaos, specifically Toru Yano, Tomo Iro Ishii. They take on just five guys. Now we know that there's been tensions with Desperado regarding his former stablemates. Now don't forget Doiki and Taichi. And Takamichinuku, they were in fact members of Suzuki Goon together. Um, basically, you would think it was pointless. Uh, but however, we have been seeing a lot of impressive momentum coming from one particular person, and that is, of course, Yuyu Uemura. We normally would see him, he would try the deadbolt suplex on his opponent, but no, he did a diving body attack onto Hamna, allowing himself to pick up the win. So, it's only a matter of time until he makes his play to whatever championship he would desire. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a play for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. So we'll see about that. Our next match. We have Tiger Mask versus Hiroki Goto. Taking on Bullet Club members Taiji Ishimori and Chase Owens. Now don't forget, recently Chase Owens along with Kenta has been initially attacking uh, Bishimon, Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi. Due to the fact that they're threatened by their presence, knowing that they could be the next potential challengers for the IWGP tag team titles. And of course, that would have been the, the the logical thing for him for them to do in order to spread a message. Now you would assume that. However, um there was no cut uh cuts or cutting the corners in this match. It was Chase Owens with the package pile driver picking up the win on Tiger Mask, and just like that, Bullet Club wins. So the obvious question is, will they retain the titles when the day comes when they have to face Bush Bishiman? I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that match takes place at Sakura Genesis. So we'll see about that. Our next match, we have Shota Umino, Togi Makabe, and Yo taking on those pieces of garbages, the House of Torture. More specifically, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, um, Ren Narita, and Sho. Now, as always, we've been seeing Yo been kind of playing mind games or torture games with Sho when he stole the IWGP title. Now, I think it's funny because the problem is Sho, he thinks that he's the best and he doesn't want to face him because he thinks that it will ruin his record. Like, no, he does not want to defend the belt. That's what he does not want. But it's sooner or later, he has to make that decision, whether if he likes it or not. But of course, like always, there'll be distractions by members of House of Torture, um, show distracted the ref. Then um, there was whiskey a spit missed by Kanemaru onto Togi Makabe when he was about to do something. And then, of course, the freaking wrench by show, And then the double cross by Renarita. However, Yo immediately knew that this match was over, so he had to run away with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title and sh and show running after him like a little like a little hounded dog, which he feels that he cannot live without the belt, you know. So we'll see what happens until then. Now our next match we have the members of the United Empire, Kama Newman, Francisco Kara, and TJP taking on Bush um, Lij's Bushi. Hiramu and Yoda Suji. Now, don't forget, Yoda Suji is currently building up momentum as we speak due to the fact that he will be facing Tetsuo Naito at Sakura Genesis for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. So, basically, that was a pretty, pretty intensified match. You would have assumed now because, as we've seen recently, uh, United Empire has picked up some good wins. However, this was a, a match where, of course, the momentum has to go to Yoda Suji to prepare himself for Sakura Genesis. It was him with the Gene Blaster onto Kalama Newman. And just like that, LIJ picked up the win. Now, our next match, we have the other members of the House Torture, Yujiro Takahashi and Evil, along with that so-called Dick, Dick Togo in tow, taking on LIJ's members, Shingo Tagagi and Tetsuo Naito. Now, don't forget, Shingo Takagi was the one who got even with Evil because apparently he cheated his way through to ensure he wins the New Japan Cup. However, uh, Shingo spoiled his his game, but now he's making a play for the Never Open Weight title, a title that, of course, 
evil is saying that he will not lose because there's evil people in the world. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, of course, like always, Dick Togo was going to get involved. But uh, Tetsuo Naito kicked the ropes right in his dick. And then he went down, taking him out. But it was Yujiro who actually suffered the fate with the pumping bomber. And just like that, it was completely over. So... So LIJ wins the match, but that does give a little momentum for Shingo until he gets hands on Evil. Now, as you, as for Naito, I'm sure he he feels the same way as well. Now, our main event is the KOPW title. Um, this is a very interesting uh, match. Uh, I don't know. It was like a bit wacky. Now, Tongaloa issued a challenge because it's no secret that, of course, Tongaloa pin Great Khan at the New Japan Cup automatically gives him the opportunity to cash in that uh, chance for the KOPW. I mean, first it was like a um, time limit something, and then they ate some food, and then the four corner. Uh, each each of them received one point each, and then the, the final straw was, of course, the four corner thing, you know, where you have to reach the four corners in the in a strap match or something like that. But it was uh, Great Okan who picked up the win. So uh, we'll see what happens until then. Uh, you know, Tongaloa did not pick up the win. I'm sure that he will love to pick up a championship that he could be proud of. So we'll see what happens until then. Um, for right now, I think we're just done with the review. Let's move on with some news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So this is what we have for you. So let's begin with updates with the promotion. Now we have updates for, of course, GCW on their upcoming events. As you know, on the 4th of April, we this coming Friday, I believe, we have a GCW slash JCW versus the world. They just announced that Griffin McCoy will take on Session Moth Martina. I'm looking forward to that. I just hope... Uh, Session Moth Martina spits beer alcohol in the face of Griff McCoy. I don't think he's ever dealt with someone like her, but it will be a lot of fun. Now, on the 6th of April, I believe that's a Saturday. Wait a minute, the 4th is a Thursday, my bad. So anyway, on the 6th, which is a Saturday, we have GCW versus TJP. A match has been announced for that particular day. We have, of course, one half of the um, Princess of... Princess and the Princess Tag Champions, Suzumi, teaming up with Palm Harajuku. They take on Nao Kakuda and Saki. Now, this is an interesting thing. Nao Kakuda and Saki were, in fact, in Actress Girls long before um, the Actress Girls changed their their um, their ways. But it's great that they team up once again. Uh, and then finally, we do have for the Paranoid Show in Columbus, Ohio on the 26th of May... Four more names have been announced to be a, to be coming for that particular show. So any of my subscribers who are attending GCWs in Columbus, Ohio, uh, this is who they announced: Gringo Loco, um, Kevin Blackwood, tag team known as Infinity and Beyond, and Myron Reed. So that's pretty much with it with our GCW stuff. Now more updates with our promotions. New Japan Pro Wrestling Windy City has announced two matches. Uh, we have Mina Shirakawa. She'll be teaming with Viva Van uh, to take on Alex Windsor and Trish Adora. So that's going to be a very interesting match to watch. However, it's now been official, officially made. <coughs> Stephanie Vakir, as our newly crowned New Japan Strong Women's Champion, she will defend her belt against Azumi, who issued the challenge not too long ago. And that's... Pretty much what's been happening. Stephanie Akir expected it. So it was going to happen. Now, uh, as you know, it was announced by FIFO Select. A brand new name has been introduced to be inducted in this year's 2024 WWE Hall of Fame. And that is none other than Leah Maivia. Now, those who don't know who she is, um, those who do, you probably know who she is. But those who don't, uh, she is the grandmother of Dwayne Johnson. The Rock. Uh, those who don't know uh, Liam Avia, 
Um, I remember The Rock talked about her. If you guys seen the show Young Rock, um, Leah Maivia was a, a trailblazer, a pioneer, the first ever female promoter. Um, I remember Rock talk, talked about her, how uh, the state of Hawaii kind of banished her or something. I don't know. And she lost her home and everything she had. But when The Rock made it big, he made a promise that he would buy her house and he kept that promise. And I have to say, uh, it's great to hear that she will be inducted. And of course, it was reported that uh, The Rock will be, of course, inducting her into the Hall of Fame. And I'm going to presume that his mom will be accepting the the award on her behalf. So I would assume that's what's going to happen. Now, for some interesting developments, you may have heard re earlier that about my news update alert. Julia appeared in Pro Wrestling Noah. So let me give you guys a lowdown exactly what happened. Now, some of it was not entirely, I'm not, I wasn't too sure what happened. Now, when Julia appeared, uh, Nosar Rangai, uh, for some odd reason, he got that on one knee and he asked uh, Julia to marry him. She said no. He tried again, but no. But the real reason is why did she show up in Pro Wrestling Noah? Now, as you know, I mentioned. It's April 1st. She is now a free agent. Uh, she's no longer with stardom. Uh, she said that she wants to rivetize the women's wrestling in NOAA. Because as you know, NOAA has been allowing uh, Yoshi wrestlers to appear. And that's great. And she did state that she would like to wrestle one uh, wrestler who has been making some noise. And that is none other than the great Sakuya, the great Muda's daughter. Now... I often spoken about Kenna, who often gives opinions or his thoughts about wrestling in, in general, especially when it comes to wrestlers that he knows of, wrestlers he talked about. One of those talks, it was all about uh, Julia, and Kenna said this. I was shocked. I had a match, too, so I was watching on a monitor and had to do the double take like, hey, hey, Julia again? When she qu when she had quit Ice Ribbon Two, there's a lot of problem a lot of problems, right? So Kenna was questioning her about quitting stardom. So I mean, the guy has his own opinions. Don't don't argue with me. That's who he is. But yeah, uh, but I, and it's now been official from what I hear that she will be having her her debut match at um, Wrestle Magic on May fourth. So. Uh, if you guys are looking forward to it, I probably will be reviewing it once the day comes. Now, uh, a very interesting thing happened. Uh, our current double champion in stardom, uh, high-speed champion and one half of the tag champions, May Sira has issued a challenge towards Aruka Omasaki from Diana, and she issued a challenge for her belt, uh, the, <coughs> the world title. At Corkin Hall on the 29th of April. So that's going to be interesting. Now why would she want this match? Well it turns out that. Mesut has said that her debut opponent. Was in fact. Um, Omusaki. So that's going to be interesting to hear. Now for those who know this. I mentioned a lot. Spark Yoshi Piruso of America. Will be at Philadelphia. And um, they will have the show there. They just recently announced that. Uh, the, um. Fight TV, now known as Thriller TV, will be, in fact, uh, how do I say this, will be uh, uh, broadcasting from that. So if you guys have Thriller TV, good for you. Purchase it now before it's too late. Uh, but yes. Now, uh, very interesting developments coming from AEW. You may have heard the news that uh, several names have been announced for the releases with the, the company. Here's who they have. Stu Grayson. Dasha Gonzalez, um, The Boys, Anthony Henry, Slim J, Gravity, Jose the Assistant, Parker Bardot, and Jora Joel. Uh, I was basically surprised with two names, in my opinion. One of them was Dasha Gonzalez and Gravity. I was like, whoa, I can't even believe that they let those two go. I mean, Dasha has done a great job, you know, and uh, hopefully we get to hear what these wrestlers have to say now that they're released. I'm sure there's no ill will negativity coming from them, but we'll see what happens. I'm sure we will see them down somewhere down the road in their future. 
Now, finally, uh, this one I saved her last. As you all know, I mentioned in a news update, Marika Kobashi was going to make her debut in in South Korea for a promotion down there. And unfortunately, she won the match and she became the third ever women's champion in that promotion. Unfortunately, she suffered an injury and um, she immediately um, put this on her ex account. So this is what she had to say. On March 31st, I won the main event title match at the North at the New Korea Pro Wrestling to become the third North Korea women's champion. However, due to an accident, I suffered a concussion and rushed to the hospital immediately after the match. We wrestlers put our lives on the line in the ring. I'm fully aware of the risk of injury. However, when he requested an ambulance, he said there is no ambulance in Korea. When I told him that I, if that's the case, I would like him to take me to the hospital in the promotion's car. And he said, our priority is to take the fans to from the station. And it's turned out there, it, there are ambulances in South Korea, thanks to the help of wrestlers around me who took care of things from there. I was able to call an ambulance and go to the hospital. I was unable to get up due to numbness in hand. In my hands and feet, irregular breathing tremors, and I was in a situation where I can only get information from conversations with wrestlers around me, which was very worrying ex experience overseas. I determined that above res um, response and emergency not is appropriate, and I have come to the conclusion I will not be able to compete in North Korea pro wrestling again. So I would like to relinquish the, uh, the the third new Korea Pro Wrestling Championship. I mean, it's kind of suck, you know, winning a championship and things have been coming kind of things. I mean, I understand that because um, she is in a foreign country that is very different from what she's used to. Now, if you guys remember, Hiromu Takahashi was injured a few years back during a um, an event at the um, in in near San Francisco at the Bay Area, forgot the name of the of the event. He got injured after he had he had a match against um, Dragon Lee. He did not trust the doctors here. He felt that he had to do it in Japan, and I understand that uh, for her that she is in that. I mean, if I was her, I would definitely. But she is currently back in Japan, and she's trying to take care of everything. Um, I'm not sure if she will ever go back to Korea again, North Korea, South Korea again, but it's interesting to hear what's been going on. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I just hope she makes a full recovery and I pray for her that she makes it, uh, that she gets healthy. So I think that's pretty much it for now. I think it's time to call it a day. Okay. So I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. We may have NXT and I'm not sure if I will be having any reviews before then but for now we'll just keep things as it is um we'll see what happens um i'm just gonna wing it if there's anything else the only reason i have made this decision to have one uh to review one ep uh one uh, wrestling event was due to the fact that i had some things personal i had to deal with um it's something that it was planned but i wasn't too sure if i was able to do this i, I did mention i'm not sure if i was going to do that but now I did it. Uh, we'll see how it is. The reason I'm saying now is because the entire the of March, I has not I have not been working my regular day job, but now I'm going to do that starting tomorrow. So, which by this video it will be already tomorrow and it will be released. So we'll see what happens. But for now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time, same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So. Goodbye, and have a nice day. Bang.